Welcome to NASM CPT exam practice test. Our topic today is program design and implementation. Use the link in the description to download the app on the App Store for free practice tests. Number 1. In the past, how did the health and fitness professionals work with clients? A. They use a less systematic manner by giving clients exercises and tasks that had worked in the past for the trainer or the trainer's other clients. B. They use a more systematic manner by giving clients exercises and tasks that had worked in the past for the trainer or the trainer's other clients. C. They use a less systematic manner by giving clients exercises and tasks that had not worked in the past for the trainer or the trainer's other clients. D. They use a more systematic manner by giving clients exercises and tasks that had not worked in the past for the trainer or the trainer's other clients. The answer is A. They use a less systematic manner by giving clients exercises and tasks that had worked in the past for the trainer or the trainer's other clients. Explanation. In the past, trainers did not have any systematic recording or document on health and fitness. Moreover, they do not have the manner to carry out any research on the field. Hence, trainers work with clients in a way that is solely based on experience. Number 2. Which of the following is the correct order of the three steps that the optimum performance training (OPT) includes? A. Strength, power, and stability. B. Power, stability, and strength. C. Stability, power, and strength. D. Stability, strength, and power. The answer is D. Stability, strength, and power. Explanation. Stabilization training should be used for beginner level clients, as this phase is crucial for all individuals to achieve higher demands of the next training phases. Power training should be the last step as it includes both high force and velocity to increase power. This process requires strength exercise, which should be done before. Number 3. The OPT method of program design gives a certified health and fitness professional a proven method of designing and tracking the activities and improvements of group of clients. A. True. B. False. The answer is B. False. Explanation. According to NASM, the OPT method of program design gives a certified health and fitness professional a proven method of designing and tracking the activities and improvements of an individual client. Number 4. Which of the following is the characteristic of duration of training? A. How hard a person exerts him or herself during the performance of an exercise compared to their maximum effort level. B. How long a given training session lasts and also how long a client stays in one phase of training. C. How often a client is training. D. How quickly repetitions are performed. The answer is B. How long a given training session lasts, and also how long a client stays in one phase of training. Explanation. According to NASM, duration of training refers to how long a given training session lasts, and also how long a client stays in one phase of training. Number 5. How many basic categories of exercises are there and what are they? A. 3. Single joint, multi-joint, and total body. B. 2. Single joint, and multi-joint. C. 2. Single joint, and total body. D. 2. Multi-joint, and total body. The answer is A. 3 single joint, multi-joint, and total body. Explanation. NASM has this categorization based on how much of the body is used to take the exercise. Number 6. Which of the following is the guideline of NASM's repetition continuum for strength exercises? A. A larger number of repetitions with a lighter weight load are recommended. B. A lower number of repetitions with a higher weight load are recommended. C. A moderate number of repetitions with a moderate weight load are recommended. The answer is A. A moderate number of repetitions with a moderate weight load are recommended. Explanation. 
while having a moderate number of repetitions with a moderate weight load, is the guideline of NASM's repetition continuum for strength exercises. A larger number of repetitions with a lighter weight load are recommended for muscle endurance. Moreover, a lower number of repetitions with a higher weight do increase strength in strength exercises, but excessive weight can put patients at risk of injury. Number 7. Which of the following should be the recommendation of NASM to increase muscle mass? A. 3 or 4 medium repetition sets, 8 to 12, with moderately heavy weight. B. 3 to 6 low repetition sets, up to 10, with weights that weigh 10% of the client's weight. C. Up to 3 high repetition sets, 12 to 25, with light weight. D. 4 to 6 low repetition, up to 5, with maximum weight. The answer is A. 3 or 4 medium repetition sets, 8 to 12, with moderately heavy weight. Explanation. 3 or 4 medium repetition sets, 8 to 12, with moderately heavy weight, are to increase muscle mass. Up to 3 high repetition sets, 12 to 25, with light weight, are to increase stability and muscle endurance. 4 to 6 low repetition, up to 5, with maximum weight are to increase strength. 3 to 6 low repetition sets, up to 10, with weights that weigh 10% of the client's weight, are to increase power. Number 8. What is intensity? A. A scale that reflects how hard an individual is working compared to how hard that particular client can work. B. A scale that reflects how long an individual is working compared to how long that particular client can work. C. A scale that can't be measured by the amount of weight lifted or by how much oxygen the individual is consuming. The answer is A. A scale that reflects how hard an individual is working compared to how hard that particular client can work. Explanation. According to NASM, intensity is a scale that reflects how hard an individual is working compared to how hard that particular client can work. Number 9. In terms of NASM's intensity continuum, which of the following is the recommendation of NASM to increase strength? A. NASM recommends working at less than 50% of the client's maximum weight capability, or just one-tenth of total body weight to fusing medicine balls. B. NASM recommends working at from 40 to 70% of the client's maximum weight capability, or one repetition maximum. C. NASM recommends working at from 71 to 85% of the client's maximum weight capability. D. NASM recommends working at from 86 to 100% of the client's maximum weight capability. The answer is D. NASM recommends working at from 86 to 100% of the client's maximum weight capability. Explanation. According to NASM, working at from 86 to 100% of the client's maximum weight capability can increase strength. Working at from 40 to 70% of the client's maximum weight capability or one repetition maximum can increase stability and muscle endurance. Working at from 71 to 85% of the client's maximum weight capability can increase muscle mass. Working at less than 50% of the client's maximum weight capability, or just one-tenth of total body weight, if using medicine balls can increase power. Number 10. In terms of repetition tempo, for stabilization level exercises, what should the tempo do? A. The tempo should remain slow and controlled. B. The tempo should be somewhere in the middle. C. The tempo should be as quick as can be managed, while keeping all muscles under control. The answer is A. The tempo should remain slow and controlled. Explanation. Slow and controlled tempo develops endurance and stability, while allowing for observation of postural distortions or compensations. In addition, this provides preparation for more advanced motion later, as the slower tempo gives added stimuli to the nervous system and the connective tissue. Number 11. The word tempo in the text is closest meaning to A. Pace. B. Beat. C. Speed. The answer is A. Pace. Explanation. Tempo refers to how fast one exercise is performed in a set, which can be changed to meet the capabilities and goals of a particular client, hence, pace is the right answer.
Beat refers to a single blow to something or a movement of something. Speed refers to the rate at which something moves or travels. Number 12. In terms of rest time, strength level exercises use which of the following? A. Oxygen and glucose energy stores. B. Adenosine triphosphate or creatine phosphate, ATP or CP, and glucose energy stores. C. ATP or CP energy stores. The answer is B. Adenosine triphosphate or creatine phosphate, ATP or CP, and glucose energy stores. Explanation. Adenosine triphosphate or creatine phosphate, ATP or CP, and glucose energy stores. Strength level exercises. Oxygen and glucose energy stores. Stability level exercises. ATP or CP energy stores. Power level exercises. Number 13. Which of the following is true about power level exercises? A. Power level exercises should be performed with a relatively short rest period between exercises and sets, which may be anywhere from no time to a minute and a half. B. Power level exercises can be performed in relatively quick succession, less than a minute of rest, or with a longer rest, up to 5 minutes. C. Power level exercises should have a lengthier rest period, anywhere from 3 to 5 minutes. The answer is C. Power level exercises should have a lengthier rest period, anywhere from 3 to 5 minutes. Explanation. Power level exercises should have a lengthier rest period, anywhere from 3 to 5 minutes. It is crucial for patients to take a rest between sets, as it determines the sustainability of the next sets. Moreover, since the power level exercise contains more sets and higher weight, it needs the lengthiest rest period. Number 14. In terms of training volume, which of the following is correct? A. The amount a client can train depends on many factors, all related to fitness goals or limitations. B. The amount a client can train depends on many factors, some unrelated to fitness goals or limitations. The answer is B. The amount a client can train depends on many factors, some unrelated to fitness goals or limitations. Explanation. The amount a client can train depends on many factors, some unrelated to fitness goals or limitations. One of the factors defining the training volume is lifestyle. Lifestyle includes work, family obligations, age and overall current fitness level. These features are not related to fitness goals or limitations. Number 15. How would you rephrase the meaning of the word training volume? A. It refers to how reps or sets are performed. B. It refers to how many reps or sets are performed. C. It refers to how long reps or sets are performed. The answer is B. It refers to how many reps or sets are performed. Explanation. Training volume refers to the amount of sets and reps you perform. Number 16. Which of the following is the characteristic of strength level exercises? A. Strength level exercises should be at a lower volume, with between 6 and 30 total exercises. B. Strength level exercises should be more moderate, with the total number of exercises to be determined by multiplying the number of sets by the number of repetitions, should be between 8 and 36. C. Strength level exercises should be performed with a large number of sets, and a high number of repetitions. The total number of exercises, determined by multiplying the number of sets with the number of repetitions, should be between 36 and 75. The answer is B. Strength level exercises should be more moderate, with the total number of exercises to be determined by multiplying the number of sets by the number of repetitions, should be between 8 and 36. Explanation. Strength level exercises. Moderate, with the total number of exercises to be determined by multiplying the number of sets by the number of repetitions, should be between 8 and 36. Stability level exercises. Large number of sets and a high number of repetitions. The total number of exercises, determined by multiplying the number of sets with the number of repetitions, should be between 36 and 75. Power level exercises. Lower volume, with between 6 and 30 total exercises. Number 17. What kind of exercise would it be if its training volume is 15 total exercises? A. Power level exercise. B. Strength level exercise. C. 
Stability Level Exercise The answer is A. Power Level Exercise Explanation For power level, the number of exercises should be at lower volume, between 6 and 30. For strength level, the number of exercises should be more moderate, between 8 and 36. For stability level, the number of exercises should be high in number of sets and repetitions, between 36 and 75. Number 18. In terms of training frequency, which of the following is correct? A. The amount a client can train depends on many factors, all related to fitness goals or limitations. B. The amount a client can train depends on many factors, some unrelated to fitness goals or limitations. The answer is B. The amount a client can train depends on many factors, some unrelated to fitness goals or limitations. Explanation. One of the factors defining the training volume is lifestyle. Lifestyle includes work, family obligations, age and overall current fitness level. These features are not related to fitness goals or limitations. Number 19. Which of the following is not the benefit of a high volume, low intensity workout schedule? A. An increase in lean muscle tissue. B. An increase in the amount of muscle cross section. C. An increase in base metabolism. D. An increase in how much force a person can deliver. The answer is D. An increase in how much force a person can deliver. Explanation. An increase in how much force a person can deliver is a benefit of low volume, high intensity workout schedule, not high volume, low intensity workout schedule. Number 20. Training duration can only refer to the actual amount of time from the beginning of a workout session. A. True. B. False. The answer is B. False. Explanation. Training duration can refer to two different things when talking about fitness training. How long a client stays in one of the OPT phases, an actual amount of time from the beginning to the end of a workout session. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel for updated videos every week.